we're going to talk about what the next commander is coming to rise of kingdoms might be and what do you want me to say okay look i'm not that excited about belisarius prime and eleanor i'm just not she's not even in the game yet i'm already thinking ahead i'm thinking about what's next okay this doesn't even matter to me and correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like a lot of you guys feel the same way it seems like the reception for belisarius is like that's for ark of osiris that's for the wells who've spent six figures on the game or maybe five figures okay but i feel like everyone else is gonna skip belisarius am i right i mean that seems to be the vibe that's the vibe that i'm getting but real quick have you guys noticed the is is it like this for you the little p the little prime symbol is like on the bottom corner now what happened there maybe that's a graphical bug for me anyway today we're going to be speculating on what the next commanders coming to the game are going to be are they going to be infantry and if so what are their talent trees going to be what are their skills going to be are they going to be aoe and are we finally going to be getting sun Tzu prime i'm going to talk about all that stuff in this video but first about 68 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channels so go ahead and do that and also we just hit 70 000 thousand baby woo so if you're watching this and you're not sub like you're just not part of the cool group i'm sorry you're just not you can fix that by clicking the sub button down below and dropping the thumbs up while you're down there because it helps push this video into the algorithm but first what's going on guys cheers now forgive me but we are going to be looking at some spreadsheets today and one thing that you'll notice here is that if you take a look at all the commanders that have been released into rise of kingdoms you might start to notice a trend now if you guys have been playing the game for a long time you're gonna know that this trend is pretty reliable okay sometimes they shake things up a little bit with leadership but if you come down here it seems to be the case that every time we get cavalry commanders the next cycle is always infantry okay if we come all the way back to Genghis Khan with Saladin right after that we got infantry then when we look at Attila Takeda we got infantry next when we look at Chandragupta and William, we got infantry next. When we got Yadviga and Zhang Yu, we got infantry next and so on and so forth. And that basically has never not been the case. So with that being said, we just got Belisarius Prime and Eleanor. And so I think it's safe to assume that if we continue following this pattern, then we'll probably be getting infantry next. Okay. That's pretty exciting. So I'm expecting the next commander release cycle to be infantry. Okay now i just want to be very clear here for a second when i made this exact video trying to predict what this cavalry release was going to be i tried to predict eleanor and belisarius okay i was completely wrong i was completely wrong and i was so happy that i was wrong because i was getting the impression that rise of kingdoms was like a completely solved game okay and in many aspects it is but i'm just relieved to know that i wasn't able to predict what we got from eleanor and belisarius so that's really exciting so i want you guys you know throughout this video to take everything that i say with a grain of salt this is i'm not you know this is not a leak this is not from any insider source this is literally just i'm using my game knowledge i've been playing the game for like what six years now almost over five years at least okay and so based on everything that i know about rise of kingdoms we're gonna try to predict the upcoming commander release so i think it's going to be infantry and then the question is when are we going to be getting these new commanders right that's what i think everyone wants to know and so my assumption is we'll be getting it at the end of july okay that would put this at 70 days since the release of eleanor and belisarius okay roughly speaking i know that like eleanor we don't have eleanor yet I, I understand that but i think we're about two months away from seeing new infantry commanders okay so that's probably really exciting for those of you that are infantry mains i think that's what you guys have been looking forward to and honestly i feel like gorgo and liu che like just came out i think it's probably because they're just so dominant right like you always hear about gorgo liu che like you like every garrison is basically gorgo and every open field infantry commander is using liu che pretty much okay so they've just been so dominant in the game that i feel like they're still brand new but like it's time we're getting a new one we're getting new infantry commanders most likely coming up in about two months now now if you come through here and you look like a lot of times when we get new commanders it's 56 days it's 84 days it's 70 days those are like the most common uh you know time frames in between commander releases and i think because recently we had an 84 day cycle between you know lapu lapu gajamata and gonzalo to Belisarius and Eleanor that was an 84 day cycle and the previous cycle before that was 56 days from Ashurbanipal and Herman to Lapu Lapu Gajamada and Gonzalo well 
I think we haven't seen a 70 70 day cycle in quite a bit and that just seems to be like if you go through and average this out like most of the time it's 70 days so I'm assuming it's going to be 70 days from the release of Belisarius and Eleanor okay with that being said let's try to think about a couple more things about these commanders okay first of all we already know that one of them is going to be wheel and one of them is going to be mightiest governor that is like almost always the case here so let's just get that out of the way now one of the other things that we can notice is that every time a new set of commanders comes out typically we get one versatility commander and then the other commander is usually either garrison or rally okay if you come through like there's obviously an exemption with engineering but if you come through here like ashurbanipal and herman was a rally and open field gorgo with liuche was a garrison and open field Justinian with Huo was a rally in open field. Dito and Yue Liang was a garrison in open field and so on and so forth. You can go back. And so it seems to be the case that we get one of each. So in this case, one of them will most likely be a versatility commander. And that's probably going to be the wheel of fortune commander. Okay. And with that being said, are we going to be getting an infantry rally commander or an infantry garrison commander? Well, if we look back over the past few infantry releases, we see Gorgo was garrison. And before that, Tarek was rally. And before that, we had Flavius, who was garrison. And before that, we had Bacall, which was rally. And before that, we had Zenobia, which was garrison. And before that, we had Guan Yu, which was rally. So, okay, it seems to be the case that this will alternate between rally garrison, rally garrison. I mean, that just seems to be the trend for the past couple of years. Okay. And there's no reason to assume that they would break it now. They could, okay. They could, they could break, they could do whatever they want. There's no guarantee of anything that we're, that we're predicting in this video, but I think it's safe to assume that we could be getting a rally commander. Now, what even just like, let's assume that they decide to break this, this, uh, this pattern that they've been having here. If they gave us another meta garrison on top of Gorgo, that would just break the game. Right? So from like a, even from a meta perspective, it would not make sense to get another garrison commander for infantry right now or two months from now. Right? So that's why another, another reason I think that we'll probably be getting rally also Tarek is, is, you know, the Tarek McCall rally is kind of old. It's, it's really just to be more of a tanky rally. And also, you know, a lot of times when you see Tarek, he is used in a KVK where you can change the troop type. And so a lot of times you'll put something else behind him. So I've seen a lot of like Tarek with Yue Leong rallies, which is insane. He's mainly used to make an army tanky or a rally tanky, right? So I think we're going to be getting a infantry rally commander and an infantry open field commander and then the question becomes like okay well first of all the rally commander will probably be mge mightiest governor and the open field will probably be wheel i've already discussed this but that seems to be the case for pretty much every i mean you can go back and look like they haven't really broken that uh since zenobia herald right like the, the rally here was was wheel but even still like this is probably going to be how it is so okay what do we know about the rest of the skill trees here well i can reveal here that i think it's to be rally and field for their actual roles in the game so okay we know two of the talent trees already most likely the infantry and conquering commander and the infantry versatility commander so what's the blue talent tree gonna be right like what what's that gonna look like well okay let's let's talk about the conquering commander here for a second i think there's a couple of different possibilities that it could be if we look back at previous infantry rallies first we saw guan yu had this skill tree then we saw Harold had the skill tree. Then we saw Pakal have the defense tree. Then we saw Tarek have the defense tree. So that begs the question, like, what is this new one going to be? Well, if it follows a skill, skill, defense, defense pattern, then this could either be the skill tree, right? Cause we, you know, we went skill, skill, defense, defense. And then I'm assuming skill, skill, defense, defense could be the pattern, right? Could be, there's no evidence to support that, but there also has never been a infantry conquering and support commander that's something to note we've never seen that we've also never seen an infantry conquering attack commander so those are definitely some options that we could go with but if we look at what we got last time so remember the last time that we got infantry commanders we got gorgo with liu che and one of them was an attack tree and the other one was a defense tree so okay i think if i were to guess this conquering commander I would say it's either going to be the support tree or the skill tree that those are my best guesses. They could really do whatever they want here, but I think if they wanted to make things interesting, they would do the support tree. Cause that's still kind of tanky, 
but then it's also something we've never seen before for an infantry rally right so they could change things up a little bit or they could just go back to doing the skill tree which would be pretty cool and it would be different than the most recent infantry rally we got right Tark is the defense tree so if they wanted to not replicate that have back-to-back -back conquering defense tree commanders maybe they could go with support or skill tree so that's my prediction there what about the infantry open field commander right because that's another like what are we looking at here well i'm going to ignore pyrus for this just for a moment because he's like not really he's not like part of a commander release cycle he was in the gold keys so that was part of like the release of the civ and stuff like that so if we look at like relevant commanders starting at alexander the great we got attack tree then leonidas was defense tree then chook was attack tree then we got cpo support tree then we got the skill tree for sargon then we got the attack tree with Liu Che. So there's really no like, there's really no pattern here, but it's also worth noting that they've never done like a back to back release of this same talent tree, right? Like we've never seen like two skill commanders released in a row, two attack tree commanders released in a row, etc. So I think that the open field infantry commander here is either going to be a support tree commander because we haven't seen that since cpo which came out in that was two years ago a little bit over two it'll be like two almost two and a half years since cpo from the time that i expect the next commander to come out but we also could get skill tree or the defense tree those are perfectly viable things to be in that slot and it's also worth noting that if you go through for every commander release i don't remember the last time we got a set of commanders that came out with the exact same blue talent tree right it just i don't think it's ever happened at least not for a very long time like if you look at ashabana paul and herman gorgo with liu che huo with justinian dito with juge leong Barbara and margaret Tarek and sargon i mean you have to go back to well it looks like the only times that that has ever happened was with nebu and cyrus and with theodora and isun sin and those are like we're talking about 2020 so we're talking about like four years ago three and a half years ago that 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 was the last time that they released two commanders with the same blue talent tree so if that's true and they've strayed away from doing that then you know if the rally is going to be the support tree then the open field commander is either going to be probably the skill tree or the defense tree and vice versa if we see a skill tree rally commander then we'll probably see either a support or a defense commander for the open field commander and then you know if they do decide to do a rally defense tree then we'll probably see skill or support for the open field commander so that's my predictions for the blue talent tree on both these commanders one thing that you might be thinking though is why would they put the skill tree on these commanders if they're going to be smite damage and that begs the question are they going to be smite damage we actually have no idea now i think a lot of people assume that they will be smite damage i think like when people think of infantry they think oh smite damage is their thing okay and look i think it is very possible that we get smite damage for infantry again i think that people wanted to see smite damage on this latest cavalry release it didn't happen people were curious to know if ashabanapal and herman were going to be smite damage when they were first revealed and they weren't so it does seem to be the case that infantry are the only of the three main troop types they're the only ones with smite damage of course we did see gajamata and gonzalo they both have smite damage but of the three main troop types so far infantry is the only one that has had smite damage and so i think people just kind of expect this to be smite damage right and that's very possible here's the thing though i think that smite damage has been a little bit stronger than they expected in rise of kingdoms and also i think the possibility of one of them be, being a rally commander is almost guaranteed right like they haven't broken this cycle in a, in literally years I really strongly think one of these is a rally commander. And so if we assume one is a rally commander, well, if you go into a KVK where you can change the troop type, then you could have Attila with whatever this new rally commander is. And if it's smite damage, that could actually break the game. Attila is an unbelievable commander when it comes to pairing with Gorgo, right? Like the Attila Gorgo garrison is insane. And so I think that the developers will probably want to stray away from that. And so if they, if they want to stray away, away from that, and you know, the, again, the reason that I think they would want to is because I think that they think that it would break the game to have Attila with a smite damage rally 
for infantry that's what i think and so if we assume that that is the case here then what i would say is maybe one of these commanders is a skill damage commander and the other one is a smite damage commander that could be possible but then that would mean that they inherently would not have synergy with one another and that's completely possible right like not every commander release has synergy with itself right like justinian and huo don't really have synergy jan ziska and joan of arc prime didn't really have synergy right so it's like you don't need to have synergy between the two commanders but if one of them is skill and one of them is smite then it's like that's pretty much it we're done it's also worth noting that the rally could just be a normal damage buff right like if we look at attila for the next four seconds this commander's troop deals 30 percent more normal damage and 30 percent more counter attack damage whenever the troop launches the basic attack it has a 50 percent chance to reduce the target attack by 50 percent for two seconds of the tools two second cooldown and so we could see sort of a infantry version of attila where it buffs normal damage but it doesn't actually do smite damage itself right and in that case then it could potentially be paired with like Liu Che still, right? Like for example, a infantry version of Attila, if it gives you an insane normal damage bonus, then Liu Che behind it pops off. Like that would be insane. So we could see something like that, where it's like not technically smite damage, but it is normal damage based, right? And then there are other rally commanders that literally like are just buffing commanders, right? Like Chandra Gupta just has a buff on his active skill. Like that's literally what it does. You also have like damage over time, like with Burt, for example, and also if you go all the way back you could look at commanders like Caesar and Freddy um, damage over time for Freddy buff for Caesar you have a buff for Ragnar so it could be the case that like the rally commander is neither skill damage nor smite damage it could just be a buff or normal damage increasing type of commander that's also possible all of that to say I think that it is not guaranteed that these commanders are smite damage I think it is more likely that these would be smite damage than any other troop type but for game balance reasons, I think they might consider straying away from it. I think that could be the case. I mean, we've only seen one infantry release with smite damage, right? Like I, that's not, that's not a trend. That's a data point. There's one release. Like they, they do not have to release smite damage for infantry ever again, right? Like people associate infantry with smite damage, but in reality, it's only happened one time, just once. They might never do it again. Like there's no reason to assume that, that they will continue to make infantry the smite damage troop type okay so is it very possible yes is it guaranteed no do i want them to be smite damage well i think probably right i would like them to be smite damage i think a really good open field pair for liu che would be nice the fact that we have alexander the great with liu che and it's already popping off insanely well is good the fact that we have cpo prime with liu che already an insane pairing love to see it but for me personally like if we got another smite damage open field infantry commander i think that would be like that would really unlock whatever we're trying to do with Liu J, okay and it would be insane but also I want to be like like let's be real here I kind of want skill damage as well because I want something better for my CPO Prime than Guan Yu Guan Yu is a third generation commander guys Guan Yu came out at like what was it like the beginning of 2020 or something like that I like or was it the end of 2019 I think it was the beginning of 2020 I don't really know but I recruited mine in January of 2020 but I might not have gotten him on day one I really I don't remember but by the time this new infantry set comes out Guan Yu will be four and a half years old okay and he still claps in the open field but he's very squishy these days like his stats are definitely lacking and so if we got at least an open field commander here that is skill damage i don't really think i would hate that right because then you would continue to pair liu che with either gorgo or alexander the great and then the open field commander if it was skill damage well boom now you've got an even better theoretically an even better pair than guan yu for cpo prime right i think that would be sick so do i want them to be spite damage I think that could be really cool if we did smite damage again it would definitely shake up the rally meta for sure but i would be very happy with some strong skill damage here as well now one last thing that i want to point out here is that if we think about what else could these commanders do besides single target or aoe skill damage or smite damage we obviously talked about buffing but we also have to talk about things like mighty shields and mighty healing okay if we look at somebody like Heraclius or Heraclius I don't know how you pronounce it people are correcting me in the comments but regardless you get a mighty shield from him 
and you also have mighty healing on Gajamata. Where is he? His third skill has mighty healing factor. Okay. And these are two very underutilized effects in rise of kingdoms. And the reason that I think that right now might be the most likely time that we see more healing and shielding is because we've seen the circle formation come out with more healing factor and the testudo formation is giving you a benefit for both shielding and healing as well and these two formations came out without a splash at all basically nobody cares about these or uses these whatsoever like there's literally no benefit to them almost at all right now of course we did just get the staggered formation as well but that's completely different so like why would they put these formations in the game if they aren't like utilized super well by anything that's currently in the game well the answer would be that they would be benefiting somebody that's coming to the game later down the line and perhaps Perhaps this infantry release is the one that could bring us either more shielding or healing and why would that be the case well if we look historically like some of the best healers are infantry right we have Zenobia we have Richard the first and when we look at shielding well the best shields in the game are for infantry as well right we have Alexander the Great we have Charles Martel and we even have CPO Prime gives shields too and so I think, you know, if we were going to see these formations be utilized at any point, perhaps it could be right now with this new infantry release. And if that's the case, like, could we see healing on like an infantry rally? Like, ah, oh, that doesn't seem likely maybe as a secondary effect or, you know, same thing with, um, the open field commander. Maybe you could see that, you know, passively like Boudicca prime, or we could see you no know, shielding. Could we see shielding on a rally commander for infantry? I think that would be a super interesting strategy that they could go with because I mean, historically infantry rallies have been the most tanky rallies in the game. And if they're going to continue going down that route, well, then it would make sense that if they were going to release another tanky infantry rally that maybe they just straight up give it a shield this time and who knows we'll take it from there so i just wanted to throw this in there as well as another you know possibility that people might not be considering but you know they might not be smite damage they could be like healing shielding things like that because as of right now like otherwise we have no reason for them to have put these formations in the game okay now let's get into some real speculation this is like this is real this is dangerous levels of speculation okay because this is like none of this is even remotely like this is just my gut feeling at this point okay everything else has been based on a little bit of data right but this is all going to be my speculation and i was very wrong about this when it came to the cavalry commanders and that is are these going to be aoe damage commanders or single target damage commanders and i personally think and this is going to be very unpopular i think they're both going to be single target damage commanders why do i think this well let's see if we can find a trend here okay if we look at gorgo with liu che there was a single target and an aoe the release before that was single single the one before that was single aoe the one before that was single single and at this point we're already at july of 2021 which will have been three years until the release of this you know hypothetical new infantry cycle you can ignore this this is just the way i have this spreadsheet set up it's going to keep changing what these numbers are but either way what we can see for the trend is that it went single 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 aoe single 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 aoe single single seems to be the trend right am i crazy i think both these commanders are going to be single target damage commanders or like i said the rally commander or maybe even the open field commander could be more of a supportive buffing commander so think of like alexander the great right his active skill doesn't actually do any damage he has a shield he provides nearby shields it's a debuff when he's expertise right so we could be seeing you know a commander like that but if they do both deal damage i think the all signs point to them both being single target so if you were hoping that we're getting another liu che boy i do not think so okay i do not think so infantry if we're being honest infantry doesn't need another liu che when liu che came out infantry needed him infantry was by far the worst open field performing troop type in the game but these days that is no longer the case i think they compete just as well with cavalry and with archers and you could even argue that they might even be a little bit better than one or both of those troop types at this point in time so i don't think either of them will be aoe i could be completely wrong about that but the trend seems to be that if we got an aoe commander last time we won't get one this time and i think that will be the case 
here now if they are both single target uh commanders which you know we can reveal this now then what are we looking at for the damage factor okay well this is another area where i was very wrong when trying to predict eleanor and belisarius eleanor and belisarius were a little bit light on the damage factor if i'm being honest with you and i think that that's because they were well eleanor just seems a little bit lackluster in general but Belisarius has the really powerful debuff and I think they tried to you know tone it down a little bit but if we look at the conquering commander if the rally commander is going to be single target then I would expect it to be at least sort of what we got with the last single target and if we look at Tarek by default he had 2500 single target damage factor that's expertise by the way and then if he was being surrounded the skill deals an extra up to 900 damage factor so 3400 that's an insane single target hit but even just vanilla 2500 is still very high for a single target damage we don't really have many commanders that can really compete with that right who always higher justinian is the same but like that's pretty much one of the highest single target hits in the game so if our new supposed rally commander is going to be sort of a vanilla beat stick just like Tarek was then i think it's safe to assume that it could be around the 2500 mark now if they wanted to do some power creep they could bring it up to 2700 and if he has a debuff or a buff or something like that or you know healing fat whatever then you can expect this to be you know 2100 to 2400 somewhere in there probably around 2300 is the sweet spot i think that would make sense considering what we got with gorgo she was 2300 although she also had lower rage requirements and you know is this commander going to have a lower rage requirement i don't think there's any way to predict that honestly i have no idea how they decide to do that gorgo is the only infantry commander that has a lower rage requirement so I don't see a trend there again i see a data point so you know i don't think there's any reason to believe that but my prediction is you know honestly let's let's call this 20 2300 to 2700 i think that is somewhere in the range of what we could see for the single target hit on the rally commander and then when it comes to the open field commander i'm looking around a similar but smaller range i think that you know again unless this is like a vanilla beat stick uh which again i use that term very often when i'm talking about commanders that just deal damage i got that term from Yu-Gi-Oh. by the way i don't know if you guys are familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh. it maybe other games use that terminology but essentially what a vanilla beat stick is is that it doesn't do anything but beat you down it doesn't do anything except just plain damage okay it's kind of a brutal like when you think about it it's like that's kind of a brutal way to say it like it's a beat stick like i'm just gonna beat you down but that's really what i'm thinking this might be and if it is the case maybe the damage factor will be a little bit higher right like when we look at huo he's kind of just a vanilla beat stick right he's got a lower uh rage requirement for a couple of seconds and he's got a big damage factor and that's pretty much it same thing with Tarek. 2500 single hit doesn't do much but when you see a buff or a debuff then you see that number come down a little bit like with gorgo she's doing more things with that active skill when you look at belisarius prime he's doing more things with the active skill right and that's when that number comes down so that's why i've got quite a big range here if these commanders do anything fancy expect a lower damage factor if they don't do anything fancy expect a higher damage factor that's kind of how i usually see them balance the game unless they want to you know usher in a new era of power creep like they did when nevsky came into the game and arguably like they did with with liu che i think liu che is kind of a big jump in power if i'm being honest i mean 2255 target aoe is insane but again one of these commanders um or both of them honestly could be more of a buffer or a debuffer that's that's totally the case now the other thing that i want to kind of touch on here is that the past few commander releases have been quite niche right Belisarius seems to have a very unique role. His expertise makes it so that way Wells, or really anyone who has him, does, has a better time swarming down a flag, a fort, or a garrison. But on top of that, I think Belisarius with the mobility tree is going to be an all star top performer in Ark of Osiris and Osiris League. I think he's probably going to shine in those game modes, if I'm being honest. And that's not that surprising that they would release a commander like this right now because we have osiris league going on and they've also been changing arc of osiris they have that pioneer thing i don't know if we got that but the pioneer event for arc of osiris is is a thing right so his niche role seems to be swarming things down and arc of osiris and by the way you do a lot of swarming in arc of osiris with structures and then on top of that eleanor seems to be pretty much a niche commander as well she seems to be and this is, has to be tested but she seems to be more of a pass related garrison commander right that's kind of exactly what she's meant for and when we compare that to the release cycle before that 
well we got engineering and like that is the most niche you can get i mean this is a completely different way of even playing the game right so it seems like the recent commander releases have been a little bit more niched down to a specific role the commanders do one specific thing rather than just be a generic rally or a generic open field and if that's the case well then who knows what this upcoming infantry could be it could be just like with Belisarius Prime, it could fill a very specific role, right? That could be the case. And if that is the case, well, who knows what this commander, what these commanders could be, right? We could get an Alexander the Great 2.0. We could get a, you know, a Constantine 2.0 that has just like a massive buff on the active skill. Like we have no idea what these commanders could be if the developers keep going down that sort of niche pathway. And if that is the case, maybe these commanders aren't going to be must have commanders. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But then the question becomes, who are these commanders going to be, right? Like, can I possibly, could I possibly predict who these commanders are going to be well one thing that i will say is that players have been begging for sun Tzu prime ever since our very first prime commander of cpo right ever since cpo prime came into the game people are like well wait a minute if you're going to remake epics you should remake sun Tzu, right and right now would be the most obvious time that they would do it because he's an infantry commander like and again i know that not all prime commanders have the same talent trees as their epic versions but if we look at herman prime for example his epic was archer and his legendary is archer and if we look at belisarius prime his epic was cavalry and his legendary is cavalry and so if they're going to continue with that trend well then this commander cycle could be an infantry commander that's a prime version and honestly guys i don't think that they're going to make prime versions of pericles or bjorn at least not anytime soon it seems to be the case that they're sticking with like some of the original epic commanders for prime reworks so that would mean that ulji and sun Tzu are the most likely to be primes and if that is the case i think players want sun Tzu more and they know this and lilith has even admitted in a developer feedback or a face-to-face -face with the developers they've acknowledged players excitement for sun Tzu prime and so i think at, from the past two years i think if there was ever a time that sun Tzu prime was most likely this would be it right this would be the moment so then the question would be well he's obviously not going to stay garrison because we don't have a garrison commander planned for the cycle he's either going to be the rally or the open field commander and i think a lot of players when they think of sun tzu they think of open field fighting right so i think that sun tzu prime could be the open field commander and if we look at all the prime commanders in the game they are all open field commanders, right? If we look at CPO Prime is versatility tree, Boudicca is versatility tree, Joan of Arc is versatility tree, Herman Prime is versatility tree, Belisarius Prime is versatility tree. So I think Sun Tzu Prime is also going to have the versatility tree, and that means he's probably going to be the open field commander. Now, the blue talent tree from Epic and Legendary Belisarius is the same, but Epic and Legendary Herman have different blue talent trees. So if we are getting Sun Tzu Prime, I don't think that we can guess the blue tree based on that if he keeps the tree then that means he'll have skill tree and he won't be a smite damage commander he'll be a skill damage commander like i said though he's probably gonna be single target which is gonna be a little bit weird right a single target legendary sun Tzu prime is not what players are expecting but i think that's probably going to be what it is but because he'll probably be an open field commander if they want to kind of keep that garrison essence to him they could give him the defense tree as a legendary that could be possible so infantry versatility defense could be the legendary versions talent trees and usually the Epic commander has at least one or two skills that sort of echo their epic counterpart right so if we look at what on Sun Tzu could be echoed from his epic version well we've already determined he's probably going to be single target but he has infantry health damage taken reduction and a skill damage bonus I mean if that's the case he also has a rage engine so what could they kind of port over from the epic version well a skill damage bonus would be very very much appreciated because if you're pairing him with cpo prime that would be insane but even if they just gave him a bunch of infantry health and damage reduction that would be insane as well because cpo would last forever but there is no march speed here like we could be getting a like this could be a infantry version of Yuge Liang, but single target. And by that, I mean, he could have a super high single target skill damage. He could have a really nice skill damage bonus, and he could have tons of infantry health, 
but he might not have March speed, right? Imagine that that would throw a massive wrench in things where he would be like the perfect commander, but he would be slow. Who knows? Right. I'm really curious to see what they would do with that. Um, I, I hope he has some amount of March speed. If they don't give him any, that's going to make it really hard to justify using, but also, 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 I'm getting excited now. Um, also Gorgo has no March speed either and she's usable in the open field okay so you know march speed not being part of his kit wouldn't instantly be a nail in the coffin like i thought it would be with gorgo so if the rest of his kit is really good he could be usable same thing with with juge leong right like he has no march speed on his kit either and people still use him so who knows we could be getting a really interesting sun Tzu prime that i don't think anybody is expecting I think a lot of people want Sun Tzu Prime to be a five target AOE or they want him to be an AOE smite damage or something like that. I don't think so. I think he'll be single target and I think he'll be mostly a tanky commander, right? But of course, we might not even get Sun Tzu Prime, right? They could do a different prime commander. They could do Ulji, for example. I also know people are waiting for an Osman Prime. I think that it is possible, but because Osman is not actually in the Chinese version of Rise of Kingdoms, I think it's unlikely that we'll get another Osman in the game. I've talked about this in previous videos, but that's just probably the truth. We'll probably never get Osman Prime, even though I would like to see that. I think he's a badass commander and I would love to see an Osman Prime. Doesn't seem that likely to me. Imagine they completely troll us and give us like infantry Matilda. That would be hilarious. A few other commanders I'm going to throw out there. These are some possible commanders that could be coming down the pipeline that I would like to see. This is not based on any leaks or anything like that. These are just commanders that I would like to see. Um, King Arthur fits the bill for what we have here in Rise of Kingdoms. Oda Nobunaga, for sure. Uh, Vlad the Impaler, William Wallace right uh Hattori Hanzo King Baldwin the fourth of Jerusalem okay Hammurabi Manko Kapak we have Siegfried the ancient German uh we have King Louis the ninth of France we have King Tut from Egypt right there's tons of ancient historical commanders that could be coming down the pipeline that would fit perfectly with the theme of rise of kingdoms which is if you guys didn't know the theme of rise of kingdoms is the feudal age and older okay that's like every commander in the entire game is from the feudal ages or older that's pretty much it okay if you guys were curious like oh how do i know what commanders are coming like gandhi probably never going to come to the game okay he's just too recent in history george washington and the united states probably never going to be in rise of kingdoms it just doesn't make sense right peter the great from i think was that Russia or Prussia I don't know but either way he's probably not going to be in the game either right like that's just it's just too late into history most likely so anyway with that being said those are sort of my my guesses as who could be coming to the game that long list uh is commanders we could see I think that again this is most likely the time that we would see Sun Tzu Prime the only other time I could see a Sun Tzu Prime would be for the next leadership cycle, right? If it's not going to be now, it's probably going to be the next leadership cycle. Like that's, that's pretty much it. Or they could just wait until next year or some other time. They don't have to do Sun Tzu Prime, right? They could do that whenever they want, but it's worth noting that we haven't seen a new Chinese commander in Rise of Kingdoms since Liu Che, right? Like, and then he came out during the five-year anniversary event, which was in September of 2023. So if we expect these new infantry commanders to come in July of 2024, at least at the end there, I mean, we're talking 10 months since we saw a new Chinese commander and look, let's just keep it real. There's a lot of Chinese commanders in rise of kingdoms. There are, that's just the facts. I think because Lilith is a Chinese company, I think it makes sense that they would want to celebrate their own history. Right? I think that, I mean, it makes sense. Like th that's why there's so many good, powerful Chinese commanders. Now there's really powerful non-Chinese commanders in the game as well. Like let's be a hundred percent clear and honest here. Okay. But they do seem to like to release some powerful Chinese commanders and if we haven't seen one by the time this next release comes around if it's been 10 months since we've had one we could be getting uh, we could be due for another one and i think that the writing is on the wall sun Tzu brother i think he's coming boys i think he's coming i think we're getting sun Tzu prime this year that's my guess i don't want to you know i don't want to get you guys too excited okay i could be completely wrong here just keep that in mind i was extremely wrong with my predictions for belisarius and eleanor extremely wrong okay i predicted that we would get a cav garrison and a cav open field commander and i think i predicted that eleanor would be single target but like besides that i was wrong about pretty much everything else in that video okay so i could be completely wrong about everything in this video as well which means we might not be getting sun Tzu prime but i personally think we are and i'm really excited to see what he is guys 
with that being said i would love to know what you think what do you think is coming down the pipeline do you think infantry needs something really strong here or do you think that infantry is in a really good spot right now i would love to hear from you in the comment section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it'll push this video out into the algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video so that way you don't miss breaking news for when we do finally learn about the next infantry commanders and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace